So what is it? Tell me, what is it? What is it? Tell me, what is it that you need to know in order to buy sewing patterns is the question. And I am here to answer that question. And if, and only if you listen and take notes and replay my video, you will know how to buy sewing patterns like a pro. But if we are meeting for the first time, my name is Javier and I am the creator of this channel. And here in this channel, we create outfits for drag queens. And that's about it, honestly, yeah. We just make clothes for drag queens. But I'm also here to inspire you to expand your creativity and also improve your sewing skills. For today's video, I am gonna tell you the tips and tricks and the suggestions that you need to know in order to buy your very first sewing pattern. So let's get into the video. First things first, I'm gonna show you and tell you the experience of how it goes when you go buy a sewing pattern in store. You walk into the store, you go to their sewing sections where they have their fabric and all the notions and everything. There should be a table and you will see a couple books that are different brands of sewing patterns. Go through the catalog of course and search what it is that you want or anything that has your attention. Once you find the pattern that you want, you write it down and go to the file cabinet and then find your pattern that you're looking for. Purchase it and then start sewing or start cutting. But there are a couple things you need to know before buying your pattern. So let's start with the first one. Tip number one, know your measurements beforehand. Before you go inside the store and pick your pattern, you need to know your bust measurement, your waist measurement, and your hip measurement. Always write down your measurements on a piece of paper or keep them in your notes inside your phone. The next thing that you need to know is when you walk into the store, you're gonna see about like five or six books of different sewing pattern companies. Vogue, Simplicity, McCall's, New Look, Berta can be one. Another one that I can't spell, I'll put it right here because I can't spell it, I mean pronounce it. Each brand has their own set of catalogs for the store. These books have all one thing in common. And what is that? It is the current season that we're in. So if you're in June or July, you're gonna have the summer collection out. If you're in December, you're gonna see the winter collection. If you're in May, I think that's spring collection, if I remember. <laughs> but what really is it that makes each of these pattern catalogs different from one another? And the answer to this question is, the fitting. So each catalog is gonna have a certain type of fit. They're gonna draft things differently from other companies so things will fit your body more than someone else's. So it is kind of like an experimental thing that you have to go through and find out what pattern works for your body. You do have to make alterations to the patterns in some shape or form, but you do wanna pick a pattern that gives you the least amount of work to do. Cause sewing patterns are kind of like a little shortcut. One of the first things that you're going to notice once you open the book, you're gonna see that there's a different set of patterns for each type of category. So yes, there will be a category for women's, there will be a category for men's, there will be a category for kids, and there's also gonna be subcategories, plus size, petite, uh, Mrs. Petite, I think that's what it's called, or juniors too, and then there's babies, and then there's kids, and then crafts, and home decor, accessories, family, nursery, lingerie, but the list goes on. So pick one and go from there. What fabric type is it that you wanna sew with? Do you wanna sew with knits, or do you wanna sew with wovens? What's the difference? Knits is known as stretchy fabric, so like your t-shirts, leggings, sweaters is a knit, and what are your wovens? It's mostly like your dress shirts, jeans usually have a tight. They do have jeans nowadays to have a little bit more give to them. And then pants also, they usually don't have that much stretch. They should have a little bit, but most woven stuff, it has slight stretch, but not as much stretch as a t-shirt would. If you're sewing with patterns, I would just recommend going with a knit fabric. So stretchy fabrics, like I said, just because I would imagine you run into less problems when sewing with knits when it comes to sizing. And when you do wovens and they're a little bit more fitted, there's gonna be more adjustments that you need to make. So definitely go for knits. That's my personal suggestion. If you wanna do wovens, go for it. There's nothing wrong with wovens. I just find knits to be easier to deal with. It's just a personal preference, but it may be a great preference for you. The next thing that you need to know is that there's different levels for each pattern. You're gonna find patterns that are advanced, patterns that are intermediate, patterns that you can make less than an hour, easy to sew patterns. So definitely pick a pattern that suits your level. If you do want a challenge, take the next level up. When skimming through for the right pattern that you want inside the book, I would highly suggest take out your phone instead of a piece of paper, 
take out your phone and take a picture of each pattern that has your attention just because later on in the season there are going to be like sales going on so they do have a sale you can go to your photo library and look at all the patterns that you've been wanting to do and then just pick them easily just so you can go inside the store and head your way out and it's an easier trip for you and you have to get this right the first time because most stores don't give you exchanges or returns do it correctly the first time. Take your notes, replay the video, or bookmark this video so you can go back and look for the information that you need so you have it ready for the next time you shop. There's going to be different sizes for men's and women's. However, they're all gonna go by inches. So you can always use a women's pattern or a men's pattern if you want to. Also take into consideration that there are different figure types out there in the world, such as juniors, plus size, women's, women's petite, misses, Petite also, it kind of sounds funny, but yes, children's and men's. Pick the right one for your body type. And remember, they have nothing to do with age, but they might be suggested by style design. The sizing behind a sewing pattern and the sizing inside a mall for clothes is going to be different for patterns. For patterns, it mostly goes by inches, and for clothing racks, it kind of goes by style numbers that they want to pick for your size kind of messed up right you try on their large and it feels like you're wearing an extra small that's why shady people i swear so always rely on the inches of your body and not what you rely on inside the store the sizing also indicates that it is from the north american companies this is important because european pattern companies use a different type of sizing system for example the brand berta they use different measurements always take a measuring tape with you just in case it is one of the items that i suggest for your sewing starter kit in this video check it out Here's another tip. You always wanna go by your bust measurement. Why you may ask? Because the bust measurement is a little bit harder to adjust than adjusting the waist and the hip measurement. Tip number two, if you're shopping for pants, shorts, leggings, you always wanna go with your hip measurement first. Just because it's easier to adjust the waist and it's a little bit more difficult to take out the hip and take it in. However, this may be a little bit different for things like coats and jackets just because those piece of clothing do have something under them and you do need more room to put it over that piece of clothes. So don't pick a bigger pattern size, pick the right one. Always, always, always double check the pattern size when you buy the pattern or you have the pattern in your hand and you're ready to buy it. Check the three spots, the front, the flap, then the back and you'll be good. That's like a three-step precaution. Always check those three areas, the back, the flap, and the front. If you pass the test, then you have the right pattern for your size. Now let's talk about notions. When you're reading the pattern and you come to the notion section, make sure it has the least amount of notions. Why you may ask? Because in this section, you can tell that it's gonna be an easy pattern. So don't pick anything that has buttonholes. You want to pick a pattern that has the least amount of notions possible. The only thing that you would really need when you're first starting off is your fabric and your thread and a needle. That's about it. But if you're up for the challenge, definitely take the challenge. When it comes down to buying fabrics, you want to go for solid colors so it's much easier on yourself. Don't pick anything that has a pattern on it. You also want to avoid fabrics that have shine to them, such as velvets. They do have like some sort of shine to them. Or nap is the word I would say. They have a directional nap. And always buy a little bit more extra fabric for your first time. Most patterns already give you a little bit more extra room just in case you do make a mistake. Do buy a little bit extra just in case. However, if you do want to work with something that has stripes, make sure the pattern shows you that you can use this type of pattern for striped fabrics. The pattern will also indicate that if the pattern is with nap or without nap. The amount of fabric recommended is usually for fabrics without a nap. What is nap? Nap is a one-way directional pattern or one-way directional surface such as velvets and wools. You typically want the nap to be running down. Here's another little set of recommendations. Pick a pattern with simple design, something with less seams that you have to deal with. Don't pick patterns that are gonna be for things that are gonna be like really tiny, small things because if you ever wanna sew small items like a toy, they are a little bit challenging to make, unless it's a huge bear, you know, go for it, but definitely don't go for small items. Go for big items like pillowcases or a pair of sweats or pajama pants or shorts. Always pick knit fabrics just because they're a little bit more comfortable to wear and they stretch. Once you're more familiar with your body, you can start moving up to wovens or start off with wovens as well. 
either or. Pick a pattern that has the least amount of notions on the back. Avoid zippers, avoid buttonholes. When you feel more comfortable, definitely challenge yourself and start doing buttonholes or start doing a zipper. Next, I will show you how to read sewing patterns. This is gonna be different for each sewing pattern company, so let me show you what I mean by that. And that wraps it up for today's video. I hope you guys found this information very helpful. I also wanna take the chance to say thank you, and if you made it this far, make sure you hit the like button, leave a comment if you have any questions, and subscribe to my channel if you're interested into sewing projects for drag queens or just sewing in general. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.